Love them or hate them, turbo trainers are now pretty essential pieces of kit for us cyclists. Back in the day, they were reserved for times when the weather was too awful to venture outside and you didn't really look forward to a session on one. Typically, you would set up in the kitchen or garage and sit there for 45 minutes, grinding away with nothing but your favourite motivational music for company. Quite frankly, it was pretty dull and boring. Nowadays, things couldn't be more different. While you will still have to sit there getting all hot and sweaty, thanks to interactive apps like Zwift and KinoMap, you can almost look forward to it. So how do you actually go about setting up a turbo trainer if you want to use these apps? Well, it's actually pretty simple. And what's more, you probably have everything you need already. Firstly, you'll need some kind of space to set up in. I personally can use my garage or my conservatory but many of you will have places like a basement or a spare room. For me, the garage is out of the way and I can leave everything permanently set up, but it's not the most pleasant place to ride. And while the conservatory is much nicer, I do get a little bit of nag pie from my other half to take it all down again. Next, you'll need a riser for the front wheel and some kind of rubber mat to place on the floor. One of these yoga mats is ideal. This will make the setup slightly quieter and prevent sweat going all over your nice clean tiles or floorboards. The obvious piece of equipment is the turbo trainer itself. Now these come in two basic flavours, smart and dumb. Depending on model, a smart trainer will have things like power and speed sensors built in, which are essential for communicating with the particular app you want to use. If, like me, you have a plain old dumb trainer, I got my basic tax one from my local Halfords, you'll need some external speed and cadence sensors before you can use the apps. You may also need a heart rate sensor even if you are using a smart trainer. Fortunately, if you own a reasonably up-to-date cycling computer, it's likely you will probably already have them. Next, you will need some kind of device to run your chosen app. This can be a laptop, tablet or even a smartphone. I personally use my MacBook Pro and my iPhone. I also have an Android projector for a more immersive experience, but I've made a separate film showing you how to set this up. Whatever device you use, it must either be Bluetooth or Ant Plus enabled, preferably both. The exact connection will be determined by your sensors. My MacBook and most other laptops are already Bluetooth enabled, but for added connectivity, I also use a USB and plus dongle. It's also a good idea to have some kind of stand in front of the bike so you can actually see the screen while you're riding, a fan to cool you down, and some music to keep you entertained. So that's the classic pain cave setup. Next, you'll need to install your chosen app on your device. Now, there are plenty to choose from, but by far the most popular is Zwift, while I personally also like using KinoMap. Both of these apps have free downloads and free trials if you just want to give them a quick look before fully signing up. Alternatively, you can also just go onto YouTube and use one of the many free training videos on there. If you want something structured, you can join an actual spinning class, or if you want a slightly more outdoors experience, you can ride on and off-road pretty much anywhere in the world. I've even made one myself, covering one of my favourite local road routes. It takes about 45 minutes to ride, and I'll include a link in the description below.
Once you have the bike on the turbo trainer, you'll need to follow any on-screen instructions to pair the sensors with the app. This will vary depending on the app, the sensors and the device. I personally have separate speed and cadence sensors and I wear the heart rate sensor. All three are fairly new and are both Bluetooth and Ant Plus enabled, so they will connect to pretty much any device and cycling computer. A thing to note here is that under normal circumstances, if you're only using Bluetooth, say to a laptop, you can only connect a sensor to one device at a time. I say this because I like to use an app called PolarBeat to record my heart zones. This runs on an old iPhone and connects to my heart rate sensor using Bluetooth. If I was then to try and use the same Bluetooth connection for Zwift or Kino Map, it wouldn't work. This is why I also use the Ant Plus dongle. Ant Plus will connect to as many devices as you need. Older sensors are only Ant Plus, so you will have no choice but to run the app on your laptop using a dongle. This may be the only thing that you will actually need to go out and buy. That, in theory, is pretty much everything you need to set up. You can now go for a fully connected turbo training session. If you haven't already tried Zwift, you're riding in a virtual computer generated world with very real riders from around the globe in real time. Just like on an actual ride, you can draft, follow wheels and get very competitive. You can even chat if you're feeling particularly social. Zwift also organises public group rides and training sessions, plus it also has a great feature which allows you to organise a private meetup for you and your cycling chums. You can even set it so that everyone stays together as long as they're pedalling. Kinomap, on the other hand, uses GPS data and videos of real rides from around the world to create a more realistic on the bike experience. Put very simply, it takes the information from the sensors on your bike or trainer and then plays the video either faster or slower depending on how fast or slow you're riding. Kinomap works slightly differently to Zwift in the sense that it's only available for mobile devices so all your sensors will need to be Bluetooth and if you want to view it on a larger screen you have to use a QR code to view it through a laptop. Both apps will connect with Strava so when you've finished your ride you'll be able to upload it as normal and receive kudos just as if you'd done it in real life. Obviously, with the world the way it is at the moment, many people will be turning to indoor training. Some will argue that 45 minutes on the turbo can't give you the same benefits as 45 minutes actually cycling out on the road. And while this may or may not be true, for some this will be the only way of getting any on the bike cycling for a while. The bottom line is that riding a turbo trainer is not the same as cycling out on the road, but in my humble opinion that's not necessarily a bad thing. I personally have seen some great benefits from these rides, not just from a fitness point of view, but also from a cycling technique and psychological point of view. What better way to build up your endurance? hone your pedalling style and develop mental toughness with 45 minutes of non-stop riding. Enjoy your turbo training, stay safe and thanks for watching. <laughs>